Welcome to this presentation on the new Ontario Catholic Elementary Curriculum Policy Document for Religious Education. The policy document begins with a few brief words about the Church's General Directory for Catechesis, which outlines the rationale and fundamental principles, that is, the why and how, of catechetical instruction. The General Directory's central point of reference is the Gospel of Jesus, as reflected in the Catechism of the Catholic Church. This policy document rightly situates all catechesis, or instruction in the faith, in the context of evangelization. Evangelization is the context for catechesis. And evangelization is the shared responsibility of all the baptized to spread the good news of Jesus in word and in the witness of their lives. Drawing heavily on the Church's general directory for catechesis, the policy document clearly states that religious education in Catholic schools complements parish and family-based catechesis. Family and parish are the first teachers in matters of handing on the faith. Religious education in our Catholic schools supports parents and the parish in their catechetical role. The policy document's following words about religious education in our Catholic schools, taken from this opening section, are worth noting. Religious education incorporates the methods and principles of catechesis best suited to the school milieu and leading to the development of religious knowledge, understanding, and the skills necessary for lifelong learning and spiritual development. Therefore, the authority and influence of the General Directory for Catechesis can be seen throughout this policy document, which hopes in turn to guide and inspire the efforts of Catholic educators to provide their students with authentic, meaningful, and relevant courses of instruction in religious education. Part 1. Introduction. The policy document is structured with five sections. Part 1 is an introduction focusing on the new evangelization, which is the context for religious education. Part 2 focuses on the instructional approach and strategies for religious education and catechesis, and the methodology and strategies for religious education. Part 3 looks at the religious education program, its hopes, its curriculum expectations, and six strands. Part 4, Assessment and Evaluation of Student Achievement, focuses on expectations founded in the Ontario Catholic School Graduate Expectations, Assessment 4 and AS Learning, Evaluation, and Achievement, Levels 1 to 4. And finally, Section 5 looks at some considerations for program planning in religious education. Section 1.1 of this policy document looks at the transmission of the Gospel in the third millennium and focuses on the context for the new evangelization. It reminds us that many groups and societies once built upon Christian values and a Christian worldview no longer consider themselves Christian. These formerly Christian groups and societies are in need of a new evangelization. In a wider sense, we are dealing with what Pope Paul VI referred to as a split between the gospel and culture. This split impacts the Church's ability to promote Christian values in society and in culture. It weakens the practice of the faith and challenges the ability of parishes and Catholic schools to promote the faith. In response to this context, the Church is asked to embrace a new evangelization in this millennium, one that is new in its ardor, methods, and expression to reach out to those Christians whose lives are becoming more removed from Christ and His Gospel. There are many facets to the new evangelization. It includes preaching, catechesis, liturgy, the sacramental life, popular piety, and the witness of a Christian life. It promotes an enculturated faith, that is, a faith that is expressed in ways that are meaningful to each culture. It is the responsibility of all the baptized. It promotes laws and institutions that are in harmony with Christ's teaching. It evangelizes individuals, cultures, and entire societies. It is about mission focused on dialogue with other religions and recognition of the Spirit's work within them. It is about ardent and courageous proclamation of Christ's gospel. It is about authentically teaching the Church's doctrine. It is about adaptation of our methods to the needs of the times. The new evangelization was likened by Pope Benedict XVI as an opening of the court of the Gentiles, 
The court of the Gentiles was the outer court of the Jewish temple at the time of Jesus. It allowed a space for non-Jews to come in and dialogue with the Jewish people about their faith. Within this understanding, then, the new evangelization can be seen as a bold and confident dialogue with changing sectors of human life. It must be preceded by self-evaluation and purification. It must be based on a personal encounter with Christ and his gospel. It requires new approaches to evangelization while maintaining the church's missionary identity as domestic church and as people of God. No part of the church is exempt from the new evangelization. Because the new evangelization involves all the baptized, it is synonymous with mission. It is the opposite of self-sufficiency and status quo operations, and it is urgent for the entire church, especially those who are from traditional Christian countries who have drifted away from their faith. The challenge of the new evangelization is applicable to the parish and the Catholic school in Ontario. And so the new evangelization calls us to a courageous renewal in our parishes and Catholic schools. It calls us to evangelize families, children, youth in the Christian faith. Within this process of evangelization, there are three essential moments. There is missionary activity directed toward non-believers and the indifferent. There is initial catechetical activity for those who are choosing the gospel but need to complete or modify their initiation. And finally, there is pastoral activity that is directed toward persons of mature faith in the heart of the Christian community. Our efforts at evangelization need to discern the soil of the believer, that is, the soil into which the seeds of the good news of Jesus Christ are sown. We need to consider the nature of our students. We also need to take into account the cultures of our students and their families. These factors, which are important parts of the soil of the believer, will have powerful influences on our students, their experience, their values and beliefs. The soil of the believer has social, cultural, and civil realities. These realities have positive aspects and negative aspects. They have given us democracy, publicly funded education, protection of family, multi-faith and multicultural communities of welcome, and promotion of the common good. Some of the more wearisome aspects of these realities are globalization as an ideology, the advances of technology, and the developments in social communications. These have brought an immediacy of world events and cultural ideologies into the homes of our students and staff. Without legitimate critique or prudent explanation, they have a potentially negative influence on the moral development of our Christian children and youth. There is an increasing overactivity, a busyness of life, an exaggerated focus on acquiring and consuming, and these can distort our understanding of the dignity of the human person. All of this impacts our rest our cultural and artistic expression, our family spiritual needs and our religious practices, and at times, these societal influences have overshadowed the importance of the religious formation of children, and they weaken the necessary relationship of baptized children and adults with the church, that is, with parishes. And so there are new challenges for education. There are challenges from without, in this new social-political context. There is the crisis of values that is characterized by the ideology of secularism that has no place for discussion about God, the growing influence of social media, subjectivism, and moral relativism, and finally nihilism, the ideology that maintains that life is meaningless. There is globalization, with increased communications, developments in science and technology, in economic, civic, and political life. There is multiculturalism, with massive migration, and growing multi-ethnic and multi-religious societies. From within, the challenges for education include a broadened educational scope. The curriculum is more complex and more specialized than ever before. There is new content. There are new skills and models to embrace to ensure that student learning meets standardized models. There is a history of collaboration and shared responsibility between Catholic schools and the Church. Both share a responsibility for society's social and cultural development. Both collaborate in family pastoral care, addressing the needs of the less fortunate among us. These are the same challenges that confront religious education in the new millennium. The new millennium is challenging the Catholic school to a courageous renewal, not merely one of adaptation, but of missionary thrust and the duty to evangelize. There are key characteristics of Catholic schools that are necessary for effective educational activity in the church and in society. 
First is its ecclesial and cultural identity. Catholic schools participate in the Church's evangelizing mission. We are also mandated by the state to educate its children. We perform service to society. We are a place of integral human education in which Christ is the foundation. And in this way, we perform a service to society that can be characterized as a mission of education that is a work of love. The relationship between the Church and Catholic schools in Ontario, then, is one of collaboration. The Church needs discernment to identify the educational resources and spiritual resources within its commitment to addressing future challenges in education so that the ecology of the human person is constructed. Catholic schools can make a real contribution in promoting authentic education, instruction in the faith, and in witness to the common good in collaboration with its various communities, that is, parents, church, parishes, teachers, and educators. The Catholic school is a challenged and compassionate meeting place, an educational ecclesial community. Among the young people we receive, there are those who are experiencing the difficulties of the present time. These young people in difficulty include those who are struggling to learn but lack the strength of diligent effort. There are those who are incapable of self-sacrifice or perseverance, often lacking authentic family role models to guide them. There are increasing numbers of students who are indifferent to the Christian faith. They are non-practicing in the local parish community and totally lacking in religious and moral formation. And there is a growing number of students and families who exhibit a profound apathy towards such formation. This atmosphere can produce a certain degree of pedagogical tiredness, which intensifies the difficulty of being both teacher and educator in today's context. The primary goal of the Catholic school is the promotion of the human person in their material and spiritual needs, and this is the heart of Christ's teaching. Our educational activity, therefore, combines pedagogical instruction with curriculum, and these are underpinned by a Christian concept of the human person and a concern for their integral human development. The complexity of our modern world and the growing secularism around us combine to weaken the Catholic school's ecclesial identity and its relation to the parish. Despite these influences, Catholic schools are still genuine instruments of pastoral ministry. We are participants in the Church's evangelizing mission. We are a privileged environment of Christian education. We are a genuine experience of Church. We are involved in the care or attention for society's weakest and marginalized, and those who are suffering from material and spiritual poverty. Our Catholic schools, by virtue of our cultural identity and educational nature, are at the public service of society. One of Catholic education's most significant elements and potential contributions to society is the synthesis between culture and faith that we provide. Within our schools, knowledge is acquired in the light of faith, and this becomes for our students a Christian vision of the world, of life, of culture, and of history. The public character and denominational curriculum of our Catholic schools fulfills a public role which ensures cultural and educational pluralism while respecting parental wishes. The Catholic school's community requires a staff who strive for authenticity, exemplary character, through dedication to the truth of the Christian faith which we teach. To quote Paul VI, then, modern persons listen more willingly to witnesses than to teachers, and if they do listen to teachers, it is because they are witnesses. How do we do this? The Church must provide and ensure the necessary support and formation for all involved in the work of religious education, that is, teachers, parents, educators, catechists, priests, and bishops. There is a need for formation and pastoral care that is spiritual in nature, the evangelized themselves must receive and accept evangelization. This spiritual renewal, therefore, is only possible through a personal encounter and live communion with Jesus Christ. Attention to the relationships among the Catholic schools educating community is needed to ensure the achievement of the Catholic school's goals, that is, the education and transmission of the faith. Teachers in Catholic schools have a place of privilege and great responsibility in the new evangelization, and for parents, their primary and natural responsibility is to support children through the school and the parish. Parents and guardians are the first educators in their children's practice of the faith and in their formation to receive the good news of the gospel. 
The transmission of the faith takes place when children and parents together practice regular participation in the sacraments, especially Sunday Mass, and in the ritual of daily prayer, for example, in the morning, at mealtime, and at bedtime. The transmission of the faith also takes place when children and parents practice together devotions and seasonal rituals, such as the rosary, prayers before an Advent wreath, or a Christmas crash, reflecting and sharing on the scriptures and their importance in their lives, forgiving one another and experiencing being forgiven, freely offering service and love to one another, and reaching out to the community in charity and justice to develop a sense of compassion and concern for the common good. Parents can encourage and help their children to understand better their Catholic faith and can collaborate with teachers to help it deepen, especially through familiarity with the religious education program, through commitment to their children's sacramental preparation, through involvement in parish school liturgies, and through their attendance at parent meetings. Parent participation on school council is also invaluable. The parish is the center of our Christian community. It is the primary place where Christian community is formed and expressed. Therefore, the first catechetical task of the parish priest and parish leaders is to foster a sense of common responsibility for catechesis in the Christian community. This includes recognition and appreciation for catechists and their mission. The parish priest is tasked with integrating catechetical activity into his program of community evangelization and fostering the link between catechesis sacraments, and liturgy. An important part of the priest's role is fulfilled by working to create a bond of cooperation and friendship with all members of the school community. This includes students, support staff, principal, parents, and teachers. Working to create a bond of cooperation and friendship with all members of the school community, the pastor will support the principal as spiritual leader in the school, provide spiritual support and guidance to help students and staff grow in understanding and becoming more committed to their faith. The pastor will support faith by sharing his resources, knowledge, and expertise. This bond of cooperation and friendship includes participating in religious education classes to help draw links between the program and the gospel, especially the Sunday readings, thereby contributing to student faith development. This bond also includes providing opportunities for staff and student participation in liturgical celebrations, including the Mass, other prayers, and devotions. The pastor will encourage a collegial effort among parish catechists and school teachers in student sacramental preparation. He will create opportunities for continued evangelization of parents and teachers to support them as religious educators and witnesses to the faith. The limitations of time and available staff often challenge priests in meeting the sacramental, liturgical, and catechetical needs of the community. There is a great need for parish-based catechesis for children and youth and ministry to preteens that can help bring religious education to life for them. Trained lay pastoral ministers or catechists assist the priest in meeting these needs by serving as a link between the school and the parish. They provide catechesis to children and assist schools with sacramental preparation, as well as providing catechesis to youth and adults. And, where no chaplain is present, there is also the possibility for them to lead retreats, to participate in religion class discussion, and to help create and celebrate liturgies and represent the parish at school council meetings. It is important for the entire parish community to support the Catholic school's efforts to offer religious education to its children and youth. The community is invited to pray for its teachers, to participate in parish and school councils, information meetings, and liturgical gatherings. Within the parish, there are men and women in the community whose talents can contribute to child and youth faith development through their own testimony of faith, through simple support for parish and school activities, through presentations to students and staff, through their prayer, and through their volunteerism in the community. They are able to provide many learning experiences to help enrich the religious education programs in our Catholic schools. Therefore, good communication between the school and parish pastoral council is important to fostering the partnership between the parish and the Catholic school. The Principal and Teachers in the Catholic School the Catholic school and parish are closely associated so as to be at the service of parents, to provide students with the support they need to become active members of the faith community. 
This partnership offers a living and genuine witness of the community's faith while providing for students' education and spiritual needs. This partnership entails cooperatively working to prepare students to participate in the sacramental life of the Church. The Catholic School is an extension of the Church's pastoral and evangelizing mission. It is an important place of human and Christian formation. Catholic school leadership is responsible for the community of learning and faith development in the Catholic school. It is tasked with establishing the conditions that promote student success, with ensuring that religious education programs promote religious knowledge and skills, and help deepen students' relationship with God and their life of Christian faith. The Catholic school principal is responsible for ensuring that the religious education program is taught each year that there is consistency between the program and the life of the school, and that there is a distinctly Christian ethos in the school and religious education program. Principals can fulfill their role as spiritual leaders of the school by supporting teachers in delicate or difficult situations, providing chaplaincy leadership, providing ongoing teacher training and resources for planning religious education programs, ensuring that Catholic teaching is integrated across the curriculum, allocating the time required for teaching the religious education program, promoting and maintaining good communication with stakeholders, especially parents, pastors, and catechists, helping coordinate student sacramental preparation, inviting parents to deepen their involvement in the parish community and its social and ecclesial activities, and finally, by providing the opportunity for building parish school relationships by sharing effective practices and new religious education resources. Teachers. The primary role for teachers in religious education is the transmission of knowledge about the faith. Their secondary role in religious education is to support the catechetical efforts of the parish and home. In this way, they are participating in the work of the church as ministers of the word, teaching on behalf of the Christian community. Thus, teachers are called to transmit the faith through course content and by the witness of their lives. Some of the ways this happens include accompanying students as brothers and sisters in faith with prayer and support in their faith journey, encouraging students to take a critical look at the world and to make a commitment to be a living witness to God's kingdom of justice, peace, and joy, helping students relate their knowledge and skills gained in religious education to everyday life, teaching the content of the faith and witnessing with their own life to help students discover what it means to live their faith, witnessing to gospel values, engaging in respectful dialogue with students on the meaning of life and on the way to happiness revealed by Jesus Christ, being transmitters of the faith by helping prepare young people to be clothed in Christ, salt for the earth and light for the world. Teachers transmit the faith to students by assisting in their Christian moral formation, that is, in their formation of conscience. They also transmit the faith by supporting their students in their own journey of faith, as they strive to understand the value of Christianity and to integrate it into their daily lives. They do this by witnessing to the gospel in their relationships with students, by their participation in the church's sacramental life, especially Sunday Eucharist, by their participation in the ministries of the church, for example as lector, singing in the choir, helping the poor through the St. Vincent de Paul Society. Teachers transmit the faith by speaking with integrity on behalf of the faith community, while being faithful to church teaching and the gospel, and by teaching the content of the faith and relating it to students' lives. Therefore, for teachers, religious education is more than teaching life skills or sharing information. It is participation in the essential mission of the church to proclaim the good news and to empower young people to live out their baptismal commitment in a mature way. The student is not a passive participant in the catechetical process. He or she is the main protagonist in this important time of development. It is here that the student's heart resounds with the word that is proclaimed to them, and it is here that Jesus comes to meet them, and where they make a home for him. Our intelligence is enlightened by the Holy Spirit, so that the word can speak to the heart of the student. And the student, for their part, is not a blank slate onto which they write their own path, Each has been clothed with Christ at baptism and opened by grace to receive the Holy Spirit. Each is blessed to receive these gifts that will lead them in their search for happiness, in their questions, and in their life experience. 
It is therefore important that we teach students to become increasingly responsible for their own learning and help them to see themselves as the architects of their own success. All students, both the motivated and the struggling, must be able to count on parents' and teachers' patience, attention, and encouragement in this process. Religious education can therefore help students develop attitudes toward freedom and responsibility, a desire for truth and goodness, and an openness to dialogue involving faith and reason in the search for meaning, purpose, and understanding in life. The introductory section of the Curriculum Policy Document for Religious Education concludes with a quote from Ontario's Elementary Science and Technology Curriculum. Successful mastery of a discipline, quote, requires a sincere commitment to work and the development of skills cooperation. Students should actively pursue opportunities outside the classroom to extend and enrich their understanding of any discipline. This final section ends by stating that, quote, Teachers rely heavily on the efforts of parents to form positive character in their children and to provide opportunities for enrichment of the religious experience provided in the school. Here, too, the parish can play a significant role by encouraging active participation of children and youth in the life of the parish. To summarize our first section, then, our context for religious education is a culture that is split from the gospel and in need of a new evangelization. This new evangelization is needed for the parish and the Catholic school. Evangelization includes preaching, catechesis, liturgy, the sacramental life, popular piety, and the witness of a Christian life. Can you think of some ways in which the culture of our young people is at odds with the gospel? What are some of the ways we evangelize this culture in our classrooms, our hallways, in our school activities? The new evangelization is missionary toward non-believers and the indifferent. It is catechetical toward the believers. It is pastoral towards those who are mature in their faith. Identifying the soil of the believer is essential to evangelization. That is, identifying the positive and negative forces influencing church members' life of faith. Some of these are globalization, advances in technology, and social communications. As we identify the soil of the believer, we recognize that social influences at times overshadow the importance of children's religious formation, the relationships of the baptized with the parish and church. Can you picture a student who considers themselves a non-believer or indifferent, or a believer, or one who is more mature in their faith. What do you think are the ratios between non-believers, believers, and mature in faith in your Catholic school? What do you see as the biggest influences on the soil of the believers in your Catholic school? There are new challenges to education. From without, there is a crisis of values, globalization, and multiculturalism. From within, there's a broadened educational scope. There's a more complex, specialized curriculum. There's new content. There are new skills and models to embrace. The new millennium challenges Catholic schools to a courageous renewal through a missionary thrust and a duty to evangelize. The church and the Catholic school are collaborators. The Catholic school is an educational ecclesial community. We educate human and spiritual needs, and this is what we refer to as integral development. We are an instrument of the Church's pastoral ministry. Catholic education is participant in the Church's evangelizing mission. It is a genuine experience of Church. It is involved in care for society's weakest and marginalized. Catholic education is charged with fostering a synthesis of culture and faith to provide a Christian vision of life and of the world. How does your Catholic school collaborate with the local parish? How is the vision of life and the world that students are learning about in your classroom or school different from the vision of life and the world that they find in other places? In terms of roles and responsibilities in religious education, the church must provide support and formation, that is, evangelization for the evangelizers. But we must note that this renewal is only possible through an encounter, a communion with Jesus Christ. Parents are the first educators in faith. 
and they educate through their life of faith, through their witness of love, their prayer, their sacramental life, and their involvement in parish life. Priests link catechesis, the sacraments, and the liturgy. They foster cooperation, friendship, support, evangelization among all members of the Catholic school community. Catechists are to be a link between the school and the parish. They are greatly needed for parish catechesis and youth ministry, and they can provide chaplaincy-related help to the Catholic school. The laity. Parish leaders and laity can contribute time, talents, and expertise to the life of the school. This relationship requires good communication between the school and the parish pastoral council. The principal is responsible for ensuring religious education program delivery, consistency between the program and school life. The principal is responsible for fostering a relationship of collaboration with parents and the parish. Teachers' primary role in religious education is the transmission of knowledge of the faith. Their secondary role in religious education is to support the catechetical efforts of the parish and home, to teach on behalf of the Christian community as ministers of the Word. Teachers are witnesses. They support the faith and the sacramental life in relationship with students, helping them to relate the faith to their life experience. Religious education is participation in the church's mission to proclaim the good news of the gospel and to empower young people to live out their baptismal commitment in a mature way. It is clear that the success of religious education and Catholic education is the result of people coming together as a true community of faith and sharing the gifts and talents that the Holy Spirit has bestowed on each one of them. Can you name five people from different walks of life who contribute to the faith life of your Catholic school? And lastly, students. Students are the main protagonists in the catechetical process. They are not passive agents, and they can welcome the Word of God into their hearts. They are clothed with Christ at baptism and enlightened by the gifts of the Holy Spirit at confirmation. Students must be taught responsibility for their learning and success, with proper attitudes towards freedom, responsibility, and dialogue in their search for meaning, purpose, and understanding in life. Commitment to work, cooperation skills development, the pursuit of extension and enrichment opportunities outside of the classroom are to be encouraged. Parents and parish play a significant role in enriching students' religious experiences provided at the school and encouraging active student participation in the life of the parish. How do we empower students to take responsibility for their growth in faith? What kinds of questions can we encourage them to ask? Where or to whom do we encourage them to go for answers?